those things. <sighs> Economics, man. This is a Thor News presentation. Deal with it. Wait. <laughs> Start to see pictures, ain't you? Every day we we have, of course, a little bit extra of concerning news. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the button, baby. Stay cool. Go our news presents party dance time. Hello, I'm Mr. Money. Ladies and gentlemen, out of the presses, the International Monetary Fund warns of threats to financial stability. This is an IMF survey on the Global Financial Stability Report. Alright, this thing sounds do me. April 13, 2016. Risks have risen in advanced economies and remain high in emerging markets. Market turmoil reflected setbacks to growth, greater uncertainty, and weaker confidence. Right, this means the biggest economies are taking the biggest risks. Markets that have just emerged are in danger of getting whack mold back to where they were. And that market turmoil reflected setbacks to growth, greater uncertainty, and weaker confidence. I know the last time I checked, markets were like 17,000, 18, thousand and the Dow Jones so there ain't been too much turmoil in the markets. We even withstood the massive rate hike of 0.25% by the Federal Reserve without a bubble or an economic crash. I was proven wrong. That was neat. I don't mind being wrong. And when I'm wrong, I admit it. And I'm sorry. Alright, weaker confidence. Well, yeah. At the moment, it doesn't appear anybody steering the ship. And humanity doesn't have a clear path forward. Other than a giant ball of band-aids which is rolling downhill about to crush society. Alright, more back to the bullet points. More balanced, potent policy mix can expand global output by an extra 2%. Economic instability just in time for the presidential election. In November, five more months. Over the last six months, global financial stability risks increased because of higher economic risks and uncertainty. Falling commodity prices, oil fell on its face and didn't throw out its hands. And concerns about China's economy, according to the International Monetary Fund's latest Global Financial Stability Report. The bigger the party, the bigger the risks that are taken at party. This is more like a giant after party. You ever been to those things, man? They're debaucherous. Be like, people go out of their way to be extra wild after the hours. Alright, whatever. Earlier in the year, financial markets reacted negatively to these developments. Global equities plummeted. Volatility rose sharply. Talk of recession in advanced economies increased. 
and bank equity prices came under renewed pressure. These developments reflected increased concerns about the ability of policies to offset the impact of higher economic and political risks. Yeah, it's like, uh, anytime we get a chance to face our problem, we seem to just double down and let it ride on the same old shit. We really need guidance. We need plan, man. Cause if this whole paper mache one quadrillion pound gorilla falls over, it's getting it ugly. The situation in markets appears significantly improved since February, according to the IMF. Following some better news on the economic front, yeah, really, what was that? As well as the intensified policy actions by the European Central Bank. Oh yeah, intensified policy actions by the ECB is definitely good economic news. And a more cautious stance towards raising rates by the Federal Reserve. China has also stepped up efforts to strengthen its policy framework, bolster growth, and stabilize the exchange rate. A key question that this report addresses is whether the turmoil over the past months is now safely behind us, or is it a warning signal that more needs to be done? said Jose Benal's financial counselor and head of the IMF's Monetary and Capital Markets Department. All right, we got policies to fix three global challenges. The IMF said policymakers need to deliver additional measures to create a more balanced and potent mix of policies to reduce risks and support growth. Cause that's what policies always do. They reduce risk and support growth. If not, market turmoil could recur and intensify and could create a pernicious feedback loop of fragile confidence. You think? Weaker growth, tighter financial conditions, and rising debt burdens. At this point, it's more of like a rising debt. This could tip the global economy into economic and financial stagnation. That's where the economy freezes up, comes to a standstill, doggy paddles, and starts to cry. Nobody wants that. In such a scenario, the report estimates the world output could be almost 4% lower than the baseline over the next five years. This would be roughly equivalent to foregoing one year of global growth. Yeah, that'd be a problem. And technically, they need to do like 3% up so they can at least make the interest payment on the compounding debt that we have everywhere. What a genius idea, man. Take debt, package debt, sell debt as a sound investment. Hey dude, would you like to buy negative $100? Sure, how much? Only $85. What a deal. And you don't have to trust me. You can trust the supercomputer who trenched it all out. To avoid this downside scenario, policymakers must tackle a triad of pre existing global challenges. This is like a big fantasy science fiction mythology action movie man we got godzilla's coming in mothra's dracula's 
Frankensteins, aliens, killer spiders, angry jellyfish, hipster zombies, undead cheerleaders with hooks for hands, and common core. And we now have to band together as people figure out how we're going to fix it. And we just have to make a conscious decision that humanity can no longer be at war with itself. We can't afford that no more, man. Oh man, you missed it. I was just making all the wrong noises. Let's get back to this happy-go-lucky story, shall we? To avoid this downside scenario, Policy makers must tackle a triad of pre-existing global challenges, namely crisis legacy issues still unaddressed in advanced economies, pensions, social security, student loans, elevated vulnerabilities, in emerging markets. You think the people who police Wall Street in America are bad? You should go to any other country, you know what I'm saying? Elevated vulnerabilities in emerging markets and systemic market liquidity risks, which I think means like, let's say you got one quadrillion dollars in the economy and that you need to make a three to seven percent money every year just to keep up with the compounding interest that's on all the debt worldwide. By tackling these challenges, world output could be as much as 1.7 percent above the baseline by 2018. First, Policymakers in advanced economies need to tackle crisis legacies, particularly banks, as they play a key role in financing the economy. Banks in advanced economies are now safer, according to the IMF. Oh, great. Did you hear that, everybody? Banks are now safer. Before you'd walk in and like the floor would open up and eat you, fall into a pit of snakes and spikes. But now, banks aren't like that. They're way safer. However, they came under significant pressure from financial markets at the start of the year. As the economic outlook, a key question that this group addresses is whether the turmoil over the past month is now safely behind us or is it a warning signal that more needs to be done said Jose Vinales oh no dude the economy the markets the banks corporate payroll everything's just perfect no more needs to be done. Isn't that what they say in like an infinite growth economy? You get to some point where you don't have to improve it anymore. And then you just have infinite growth. Said Jose Vinales, financial counselor and head of the IMF's Monetary and Capital Markets Department. I believe it is the latter. More needs to be done to secure Global stability. Oh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have reached the heart of it. 2016, and they have this down to a science. It's 2016. So they've already busted it down into a science and just made it a process. So, hey, y'all, more needs to be done to secure global stability. And usually that means more money needs to be added into the system. Policy is to fix three global challenges. The IMF said policymakers 
need to deliver additional measures to create a more balanced and potent mix of policies to reduce risks and support growth. If not, market turmoil could recur and intensify and could create a perniscuous... Oh, I've read all this, man. Uh oh To avoid this downside scenario, policymakers must tackle a triad of pre-existing global challenges, namely crisis legacy issues still unaddressed in the advanced economies, such as 401ks, pensions, social security, student loans, elevated vulnerabilities in emerging markets, and systemic market liquidity risks. By tackling these challenges, world output could be as much as 1.7% above the baseline by 2018. Alright, we're going to break down the three. First, policymakers in advanced economies need to tackle crisis legacies, particularly banks, as they play a key role in financing the economy. Banks in advanced economies are now safer, according to the IMF. However, they came under significant pressure from financial markets at the start of the year as the economic outlook weakened and became more uncertain. Uncertain? Oh, I had a T to the end, that's cool. But banks also face important structural challenges in adapting to the new post-crisis realities that continue to suppress their profitability. Ah, okay. It's clear to me now, apparently, to increase global stability, we need to make sure the banks make more profit. The report estimates that these banks account for almost 15% of bank assets in advanced economies. In the Euro era, market pressures also highlight long-standing legacy issues. Issues. Banks urgently need to tackle elevated non-performing loans using a comprehensive strategy. I think that means put them on the books and financially baptize them from debt currency. Over time, they'll also need to address overcapacity in some banking sectors. Finally, Europe must complete the banking union and establish a common deposit guarantee scheme. Well, I guess that's just what the people need to boost their confidence. A guarantee. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's just guarantee. Second, policymakers in emerging markets need to bolster their resilience to global headwinds. Uh, yeah. Everybody need to do stuff better. I think that's what that sentence means. Everybody needs to prepare for a storm. I think that that's what that sentence means. The sharp fall in commodity prices has exacerbated both corporate and sovereign vulnerabilities. Keeping economic and financial risks elevated after years of growth, indebtedness, emerging economies face a difficult combination of slower growth, tighter credit conditions, and volatile capital flows. So far, many emerging market economies have shown remarkable resilience to this difficult environment, but thanks to the judicious use of buffers accumulated during the boom years, but buffers are depleting, with some countries running out of room to maneuver. Yeah, I must say. 
My eyeballs can't glaze over on the side. She's like, yeah, dude, the economy's in trouble. I mean, overall, all the fundamentals are not in good shape. Third, as the health of the corporate sector deteriorates. What? Especially in commodity exporting countries and commodity related sectors. Refinancing pressures may become more acute. And I know it looks like acute. And you would think that would be a good thing. But in this situation, it is not. That would mean like the financial pressures form a spearhead. And spearheads can pop bubbles. This can generate. This will generate. Fixed it for you. This will generate spillovers to the sovereign. As many weaker corporates are stayed home. Bank buffers are generally adequate in many emerging markets, but may be tested by increasing non-performing loans. I think the economy is like a flea market, right? In one section you got your food, and in the other section you have clothing, in the next section you have jewelry, and then you got like music, musical instruments, and well, in one corner of the economy you have non-performing loans. Loans are basically bets that don't always pan out. And when you get too many of those things to pile up, the pressure cascades, turns acutely into a spearhead. Pops bubbles that try to break it down for you. Uh, remember, you have loans that are like one year, two year, three year, five year, seven year, ten year, fifteen year, twenty year, thirty year. Some countries even sell hundred year bonds, and none of us have the timing of when all these products mature. Super, superest ones. They have those, I think. So it's safe. If, like, somehow climate change kills us all tomorrow, at least the supercomputers will know whose estate owns what. Though, these interlinkages underscore the importance of close monitoring of corporate vulnerabilities. Swift and transparent recognition and management of non-performing assets and strengthening the resilience of banks. It's weird. Resilience. A term used for banks and cancer patients. Interesting. China can manage transition among emerging economies. The most important important one is China. Interesting. I wonder which one is the most profitable one that you aren't telling everybody about. Because they don't always have to tell you, but they're telling you their best financial secrets is not part of their game. China continues to navigate a complex transition to a slower and more balanced pace of growth and a more market-based financial system. The Chinese authorities have advanced reforms, but the transition remains inherently complex, according to the IMF. Right, yeah. Man. This market-based financial system growth is inherently complex. The corporate bank nexus, well, is also critical. I bet those dudes have spaceships. Despite progress on economic rebalancing, corporate health in China is declining due to slowing growth and lower profitability. This is reflected in the rising share of debt held by firms that do not earn enough to 
cover their interest payments. Alright, this is reflected in the rising share of debt held by firms that do not earn enough to cover their interest payments. This measure, which the IMF labels debt at risk, has increased to 14% of the debt listed Chinese companies, more than tripling since 2010. Debt, it's like money, but different. Increased strains in Chinese firms are important to Chinese banks. The report estimates the bank loans to companies potentially at risk in China could translate into potential bank losses of approximately 7% of GDP. Alright, so everybody's like pre-writing big GDP chunks off their books ahead of time. Like, guess so if they come in at negative 4% GDP, they're gonna be like, yay, at least it was way better than 7. So, oh, 7. Alright, if I mentioned Earth as a family, and that we enjoy the fruits of labor, education, passion and skill of every man and woman and child that ever came before us. So, uh, we can't let civilization fall apart on our watch. As our generation's number one goal, or it should be. This may seem like a large number, but it is manageable given China's bank and policy buffers and continued strong growth in the economy, says Vinal's. Equally important, the Chinese authorities are aware of these vulnerabilities and are putting in place measures to deal with the over-indebted corporates. Yeah, corporations are stacked up on debt too. Man, it don't matter if you're Apple, Lamborghini, Berkshire Hathaway. You got a whole lot of debt. You got as much debt as you carry. Because debt helps you take out more loans. Thank for sure. It's weird, I know. The IMF said the magnitude of these vulnerabilities calls for an ambitious policy agenda. All right, they're already calling for giant sweeping policy changes to fight this financial crisis that hasn't even started to bubble up on the surface yet. Which is interesting, that's all I'm saying. Addressing the corporate debt overhang is an interesting <laughs> word. The things that overhang are like bellies and corporate debt. Strengthening banks. Yeah, we gotta have stronger banks, man. Stronger banks. If we want a good economy, we need a bank that can fight like Mars and Saturn at the same time. It was a joke. Sorry. I know people are sensitive about plants and stuff. And upgrading the supervisory framework to support an increasingly complex financial system. Yeah, it's getting complexer, for sure. Going beyond monetary policy. Because you can only lower interest rates to zero, really. Policy makers working collectively can strengthen growth and financial stability beyond the current baseline. According to the IMF, they need to deliver a more balanced and potent policy mix that goes beyond continued over-reliance on monetary policy. Monetary policy remains crucial but cannot be the only game in town. Well-designed structural reforms and the growth-friendly and supportive fiscal policies are essential 
In addition, stronger financial policies that further enhance resilience must be put in place. At the global level, the financial regulatory reform agenda must also be completed and implemented, including for non-banks. That would be me, right? All of these actions will help bring balance to the policy mix. And together we'll make policies more potent and effective. Well, sounds like we got all figured out, man. You guys go back to whatever you're doing. Think I got it fixed. We just need strong monetary policy and uh, legislative policy and a unified plan. Okay, it's gonna be way more complicated than that. But we still need to open up a dialogue now about what are we gonna do when the economy freezes up again. And you find that there's only one peanut under all ten shells. Is that a proper analogy? Anyway, I'd appreciate it if we, we could all work on this together. Uh, thanks. Peace out. So I didn't spend 18 trillion dollars, and I don't think you did either. But we're the ones who must solve the problem before the problem steamrolls us. Okay, thanks. Peace out. Hit the button, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, this Planet X story is crazier than I am.